that's just fine. We had a few O-rings go out. Well, I guess that puts that down for a little bit. Top of the morning to you laddies. My name's Ewan and Welcome back to the Old School series. So, today we have to run a couple different errands. Uh, being, uh, taking the rest of that canola load back into town. Go get that dumped off so we can make just a little bit extra money. I do also have to get tillage going. And I'm going to be signing a contract deal with the county. They want to reconstruct this corner. They won't be able to do it till later this, um... Later, possibly early spring, maybe even early summer, give or take. But that corner down there is just way too, it's just way too sharp. Uh, they can, they say they can leave the one area, but they want to know if they can cut in the mine. Because especially with the bigger equipment, uh, there's just some problematic stuff. So I'd have to clear out a couple of those birch trees. Uh, but this is all going to be tilled up. I'm going to be turning this field, actually, I've decided, into hay ground. So this will be my grass fields. And uh, we haven't gotten any uh, things started yet on the so sorghum right here. We got sorghum. I got my fields all messed up. So this was canola. This was sorghum. And then the field up on top, which I believe is uh, 47. That one is sunflowers. So we got to wait for the sorghum to pop up here so we can start harvesting, which will probably be tomorrow because it's only August. But uh, let's kind of get right into it. Like I said, that's going to get tilled up and we're going to bring out a cedar or something. We're going to get that planted as grass. But uh, we're going to have to order some O-rings for the head around that. As it seems to be that we blew a seal on the lines going to the reel. So either way, we just need to make some money because as of right now, all we're doing is losing money. I've already swapped out my hitch in the back for the... A uh, pin hitch, so we should be set to go on that. The nice thing about these cards is that they're not very, very heavy, but definitely I'm only going to be towing one with this truck, and it's also not, you know, fully loaded. So we're going to head into town. We're going to get this dropped off, make a few extra chit chang, and then we're going to uh, pop back and we'll start doing a little bit of tillage in that field. Funny story: when I went to go get coffee this morning. At the gas station, I ended up meeting my buddy Landon, and he was telling me about how he's trying to technically get out of the hay operation, so he's got an older hay rack that uh, he's got a bale spike he's just trying to get rid of, and I was telling him about, I was telling him about uh, the guys down there the other week that I was been looking for something so I can get the hay operation going on my farm, and uh, long story short, he's pretty much throwing in the towel on his stuff, so... We're gonna go check that out too this afternoon as I've heard that he think he wants about three grand for the pair of all of it because the hay rack's pretty well beat up. I'm gonna have to probably put new wood on it in the next uh, year or two if I do end up buying it. But I think for right now, it'll probably just be a solid buy to at least have so we can throw the square bales on there and maybe take it into town and go start selling them. So I don't necessarily have a huge use for them on my farm since I don't have any cattle or uh, pork. We're going to get back to the farm, and then we are going to get to the field work, because I believe with the 50-20, I should be able to knock out that field pretty quickly to where the county can come out and start getting measurements for that road. But we'll catch you guys once we're back at the farm. But I heard some of the people... So when I was reading some of the comments off the last video, one thing I saw was that somebody said I needed to complete the rest of my square by purchasing field 34 here. As much as I would like to do that... I think that's a $60,000 chunk of land, and, uh, well, let's just see here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Your boy's broke. So, we, we, we hopefully will be able to complete our little square here, hopefully within the next, maybe, year or two, but as for right now, I just, there's no way in heck I'm gonna be able to afford it unless I take out a loan and basically be more in debt to Uncle Sam, so, I think for right now get around that corner. Like, you guys see, that's just rough as can be. That corner has been terrible for the last, like, 20 years. The county's finally starting to do something about it. I've been to a couple of the board meetings, and we're like, can we just get something to be done out there? And, uh, so that's why it's like, I'm, I'm mainly gonna get that disking going on down there so the surveyors can come out, and they can get some good ideas of uh, what would be the best plan of attack on trajectory of the grade on the road. So we're just going to drop this off right now next to the gooseneck. I don't really have anywhere else to put it. 
Might as well just leave that there as well. We'll go look at the hay rack after we get this done. So the county is going to be out here. I think it's yeah 245. So I think they're going to be out here about four. They said. I kind of got a booked schedule. So I am going to go hooked up to the disc, and we are going to start disking away. So we got our first initial loop done. What I kind of am trying to do now is I'm going to section off this little spot. Because what I believe the county said they want to do is they want to start about 20 trees in. And then they're going to roll it as an even bend around here. And they're probably going to grade some of that off going off the top side of this hill. As there's a lot of runoff that goes down onto that corner. Which is just why the washboards are so rough down here. I mean, look at the grade that this goes from. I mean, watching out for traffic. It literally goes straight down. I mean, this is this is probably as rough as it gets right here. I mean, the washboards are just terrible. So I think they want to start about 20, like I said, 20 trees down. And I believe about maybe to the fourth or fifth tree up to here. Probably closer to the fourth. And they're going to ground that as just a nice, smooth, fresh gravel, uh, white rock. And then this will just be graded out and smoothened out so at least the people that are still going here for regular flow of traffic, then it won't be nearly as rough. At least the runoff and the washboards hopefully won't be as bad because then the tractors and agriculture and even just people in general can start taking that rounded corner and not having to slow so fast to get up that hill. So I'm going to head a pass that goes down here, just kind of clear out this little bit of an area so that way the county can have a really nice uh, spot to start surveying. Okay, so we got that cleared out. That looks at least good for what we need to do right now. We're going to get into this, of course, here in just a bit. But I'm thinking about what I'm going to need to... And by price team to start looking into ads and whatnot. I think a tree mulch is going to be the best course of action for this. Because I really don't want to move any of these. I did not plant a majority of these trees as I acquired this field. This is like my most recent field I acquired. Those have already been there from the previous owner. They tried to make it almost be like a snow fence. But it's just becoming more of a pain right now because of, again, the tech, with the machinery that's going through these areas now, it's just bad. So I think uh, we'll probably get a mulcher so we can just take out a line of those trees and get that out of the way so this can start getting under construction. Or at least, like I said, surveyed. So we're going to get to the rest of the field here, get started on that, and then we're going to go check out that hay rack. Eventually, I'm going to have to replace a few of these discs, if not basically take some of them off and sharpen them. The problem with a lot of this land especially is right down here in the gully, there's so much runoff that comes off the top that this stuff down here is just thick. And it also is just like rock solid. Like this stuff is hard to break up down here, which is probably why I'm digging up so many rocks. It's just that it's so compacted down here that these dirt clods and rocks just can't go anywhere. And it just eats these discs up. So I'm probably going to have to look into something to whether or not I'm going to have to basically plow this part down in here periodically uh, throughout the season. Just maybe do some really deep tillage. This might be the, one of the only fields I have to do that to. But I mean, just the hill in general. Like when I go up over there, this thing will bog down in seventh gear. Like I can drive over here just fine. This part isn't bad. 
But once I start getting up and over to this crest ridge over here, it just bogs down the tractor. Like I have to shift down to basically get the tractor moving out again. Because it's just tugging that hard on those discs. There we go. Yeah, see right there, it just really starts to dig in and bite. Turn around here and uh, we'll just kind of keep going. loving about this tractor is the sheer openness of the cab. Now I know that I'm breathing in a heck of a lot of dust, but just to be able to just kind of like, you know, peek over the side of the fender and you can easily see what the heck you're doing, it's just, it just absolutely makes this job 20, 20 times easier. But I think now we just might start doing a little bit of loopage as the majority of the spots that I needed to just kind of go back and forth with. Uh, that stuff's been mainly cleared out. This stuff up here is usually pretty easy to work with. Kind of doing circles makes it easier to do the end rows up here. Even though I don't have a huge planter, I usually like to do about two end rows with my uh, planter just for the fact that it gets me that extra turnaround room when it comes time to harvest. It makes it a lot easier to get around. But this thing's cooking along. We're cooking along right at about 11 miles an hour. Uh, tractor's, tractor's running strong. We haven't had anything so far. I mean, my connection's down there. I haven't had any hydraulic issues yet, so that's convenient. I'm really excited for that road part over there, just for the fact that, especially just my stuff in general, getting like the double gravity wagons going back and forth, it's a pain to get it around that corner, and especially with the, uh, the 4030 over there, it just doesn't have the horsepower to be pulling stuff up that hill. I mean, it, it's sad because you'd think that if you put it in first gear, uh, low range, you'd be able to pull it up the hill. And you can, but it's just, it, if I try to put gravity wagons on that tractor and pull it up a hill, it ain't gonna work. It just doesn't want to do it. So to have a nice gradual slope start to work on that field is gonna be really, really nice. Go ahead and clear off this little edge. Since uh, we were, I was just trying to get a straight line going on that for back and forth wise. Finish off the corner down here. And we'll be able to finish that little strip. And we're going to go check out that hay rack. So that finishes that up. I want to check the condition of these discs. Like I said, they were just getting eaten alive. Hey. It's not grand, but that is really starting to get dull. That one's all chipped up, so... I think I'll be able to make it a little bit longer with those discs, but it's, I'm gonna have to get something here within the next few years, at least. If not, by sometime next season, if we can do really well with uh, side jobs, because I might start looking for some contract deals to help out with... Uh, some of the guys in my area so far, whether that's just transporting stuff since I have the trailers and whatnot, or even help them do some harvesting or planting or even cultivating. Doesn't necessarily matter, but I'm gonna need to start doing some stuff to get some money, because I am gonna be running dry if I don't start making some money. I'm gonna leave that there for right now. We're gonna go check out that hay rack from Landon. We'll catch you guys once we get to his place. Landon here lives about a mile and a half down the road from me, just basically a section over. But he was a old uh, dairy farmer, and he did a lot of hay bale, hay bale stuff. And he ended up swapping out to a notch bale trailer here the last five, six years. And he's got a uh, basically an old, I think it used to be a deer one, but they got it repainted because he's more of a case operation. So that, I don't think I'll just park here, because that's the hay rack right there. We're going to go see if we can't find Landon, and we'll talk to him in just a second. 
Hey, how you doing? So you were saying you wanted... Oh. You dropped your pet cow. Oh, I got $1,000 off that? Sweet. Thanks, bud. But uh, you said you want three grand for this thing, right? Can you take off $1,000? i will I'll give you back your $1,000 for the... For the <laughs> trailer here. But 2000 for the, the trailer and the bale spikes. I was kind of taking a look at it a little bit earlier. I uh, don't have dry rot on there at all, so that's at least solid. Do you know how... I, I'll probably have to redo the bed on this, because the wood's kind of... Kind of needs... It kind of needs new wood. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely do two grand for it if you want. Like I said, I got a... If you're giving me a thousand dollars for a... A toy cow, I'll definitely give you that thousand back for three thousand. Do that? Alright. Let me go get my checkbook here and I'll get that for you so you can, uh, we can kind of get some stuff underway. Alright, and here you go. Three thousand glorious dollars. Thanks, Landon. Have a good one, bud. We'll see, uh, might have to stop by and see how the operation's going with that thing. I'll probably get it all nice and purdied up sometime. So Landon's a pretty chill guy. He um, like I said we agreed on three grand, but I don't know why he gave me a thousand dollars for a toy cow. But long story short, that saved me a thousand dollars on the entire purchase of what we're doing. So I like that. We'll just get this hooked up and we'll take this back to the farm and uh, get on to our next project. So it seems to be this hay rack's pretty loose going down the road, and of course this isn't the. You know, smoothest roads on this side of the Mississippi, but it just seems like it's riding really rough. So I might be checking the wheel bearings to see whether or not something might either like a, a hub, the hub's loose or something's just not tightened or if it's just worn out. Because this trailer is pretty beat up. I think we might be able to store it probably back here with all the other trailers. I'll kind of pull it around back. Oh, shoot, I forgot to put that there. Kind of sneak this around. I like how I bought a square. I like how I bought a round barrel trailer for a square baler. I didn't think that through, did I? I'm really intelligent. <laughs> I think we'll leave it for there right now. Drop that. I need to go make a phone call with the bank. Because I gotta try and get a loan payment in here for at least something to make a divot in my my debt. So we're gonna find out what we gotta do next here, but I'll get you guys back in about 10 minutes once I get off the phone. Yes, I will be needing to have that for a few days, so. Alright, sounds like we got approved. Alright. Alright, I'll get that marked down in my books. Thank you, sir. So we just got off the phone with Barry down at the bank. He was uh, helping me get approved on a lease that I got for a uh, cedar that I'm going to be using for the prairie grass right now. I know that's probably not the greatest way to do it, but it's about the only way I'm going to be able to get seed in the ground for grass. So we're going to run down to the store quick, go pick that up, and probably get it on the 5020 and just start planting grass over there in our uh, field 35 so we can get our hay operation up and going and hopefully have something maybe to cut by the end of the season. He's going to take off my front end. Okay, sorry guys, it's uh, it's about 6 o'clock in the afternoon right now. I've been on the phone all afternoon with the bank. Lots happened. Uh, I went over to my buddies at Prairie State. I had to, in essence piece rent one of the 1590 seed drills I had sitting out there. This is a used one. I got it for 800 bucks for two days so I can at least get the field that is over yonder on the other side of the fence. I want to plant that grass. Like I said, I want to make it my hay field. So we're going to do that tomorrow as I am not about to plant that whole thing tonight. But uh, we're going to get the New Holland unloaded here probably in the morning. I'm just going to head into the house get this stuff set up tomorrow. Uh, hopefully our sorghum hope doesn't grow overnight and we'll have to go hit that because I still haven't gotten my O-rings yet for the case. I had to go talk to Titan Machinery on that. But I'm going to go to bed. We'll catch you guys here in the morning and we're going to get to uh, planting some grass. So, yeah. Should be good. 
So good morning, everybody. It's pretty much leaving right off where we went. And thank you to heavens that the sorghum crop did not grow overnight. But uh, we're going to need to get the New Hollander off the old trailer. I'm kind of wondering if I could just maybe drive it off. I kind of don't want to, but we have to at least get that off for starters. I'm going to do something. Don't, don't watch me. You guys totally did not see anything of that, okay? So we're gonna start by getting seed pallets unloaded here so that way we can get the 50, uh, the 1590 underway. I'm hoping this has enough power to pull it. I'm pretty sure it has enough power to pull it. If not, this is gonna be a very strenuous day. That should be good for that. Well, let's get this uncovered. And we will start unloading seed pallets, maybe. Sometime before next Thursday might be nice. That's really helpful. I can see everything on that. by filling it up with that. We'll see where we're at. Okay, it's not terrible. I think I'm going to run out and I'll see how much that gets me. I don't want to fill the whole thing up and then all of a sudden I got three quarters of a tank of seed left and uh, I got to take it back. Plus we can save that seed for something else later on when we can actually afford to buy one of these things. Oh, okay. Um, might be a good idea to run a herbicide through that first. I think we'll be fine. We'll let that till it up, and we'll get our we'll get around a herbicide on here within the next few weeks once it starts sprouting through. so good I think this is probably gonna take a little bit longer than uh, a disc in this place for the fact that well we obviously know that this isn't as wide nor am I going as fast but I think this is probably gonna be the best decision I can uh, choose for this whole scenario but we're gonna keep on uh, planting some grass here and uh, we'll catch you guys probably once we get back uh, all right so we just finished the oh I don't All right, so we finally finished up getting that field sewn up, ready to go for grass. Sorghum is pretty much showing that it's ready to go as well, so that'll probably have to be something I do either later this afternoon, I might kick into that, or I'll wait until tomorrow, because I will have to get this cleaned up and taken it back. And like I, I thought, I had about 30% left in the tank, and I guess it didn't take nearly as much as I thought it would, to get that planted so i think we're gonna call it for that video guys be sure to smash that like button subscribe down below if you guys do like this content feel free to leave a comment 
in the in this comment section down below but be also be sure to check out the boomstick club for all the up-to-date content for me and the gang you guys already know who is in it i shall catch you guys all in the next one which actually will be a really cool dealer series video with that being said we'll catch you guys in the next one this is the wrench and out